Welcome to the Oracle Boat Shop. I'm Rod. I am setting up a new playlist or series of videos on lofting out the set of plans that I developed for the 9 foot Ken Douglas rowboat that I own. So if you haven't watched that series of uh, videos on my YouTube channel, you might want to just jump back and watch those. If you already know how to take lines off of a boat or have done that in the past, then uh, don't need to worry about that. So let's start with some of the tools we'll probably need for this. First off, if you've not done any lofting, <clears throat> you might want to consider picking up a couple of uh, boat, uh, sorry, books on uh, the lofting process. I have this one here, which I picked up from uh, the Wooden Boat Store, which is sponsored by Wooden Boat Magazine. Uh, you can check out their website. It's simply just called Lofting. Now, it describes several types of boats, hard chine plywood boats, round boats, big boats, small boats, and it describes the various processes of lofting those different kinds of boats, but I've not really found it to be sort of the step-by-step -step guide to lofting. This might be the book you might want to pick up, uh, Lofting a Boat, a Step-by-Step -step Manual. And it just, go and it very well details and goes through the various steps of taking the lofting numbers, which you would get with a set of plans, and starting about by drawing out the profiles, the body plan, and all of that. Now, you would have, to, if you just read the book, it wouldn't make much sense to you until you actually started to do it physically out on some plywood or a large piece of paper, which I'm going to be doing. This will be episode one. So what kind of tools do you think you'll need for lofting? You're going to definitely need a nice good set of large calipers for just marking some points or measuring and copying distances. Um, some rulers. I've got a nice 48 inch uh, straight edge here ruler. It's, it's kind of nice and new so you've got all the nice good graduations all the way down to sixteenths of an inch. Maybe a smaller one you don't need this, the large ruler for. For drawing perpendicular lines, a nice square. Mine's a little bit older but still useful, nice and accurate. You're going to be tacking in some nails into your plywood, so just some finishing nails and a small hammer. <clears throat> and around those nails we'll be bending what we call the battens, uh, or just in this case just a simple piece of wood, which when bent will take a nice sort of fair line curve, a smooth curve. <clears throat> For smaller curves, I have here some French curves. You can purchase these from drafting stores, arts and crafts supply stores. So there's various curves on here. You can just kind of figure out between points what works for you. <clears throat> to check on your uh, perpendicular lines to make sure that they are exactly at 90 degrees, a small uh, compass will work, and that's just used for drawing arcs and then joining points. I have a nice little small ruler here. I like these uh, triangular rulers here. They're very accurate to lay down onto paper. So the next thing up will be to take the lofting numbers that I have on my piece of paper. I'm going to move over to a large piece of plywood. Normally you'll see in a lot of videos that the lofting process is done on a large sheet of plywood or multiple pieces of plywood uh, nailed and glued together to create a huge uh, uh, white board. I'm not going to do that. We do use some plywood, but I'm going to actually just put some paper onto the plywood so I can take my lofting plans, roll them up, and move them away if I need to. But they'll always be available to me in the building process. So let's going to move over to the uh, plywood piece with my paper on it, and let's start the process. First, in this video, we'll be lofting out the profile view. So the full-size, nine-foot profile view of the rowboat, basically from looking at it from the side. I've started to lay out my grid pattern on my large piece of paper here. First by drawing a line all the way down the paper here. Wasn't too concerned about it being, you know, right against the edge or, or parallel to the edge as long as I have a straight line. And I just used my ruler then overlapped a little bit more. So I've got 10 feet of line which basically is the is the baseline or datum line or zero water line. Then after drawing the line I then marked off at two inch intervals all the way down the line. <clears throat> then I took my square and I began by laying my square along the datum or baseline up to one of the points and drawing all of my vertical lines 
or buttock lines on the paper as well. Now we can check to see whether my square is actually, uh, you know, terribly accurate or how well I have done in laying it down on the paper. And a simple method to do that for every single point on here and then use, instead of using a square, use a ruler to mark. <clears throat> and the, base, the principle is you take a, <clears throat> a compass, set it to maybe half an inch or so, put it on your point, on your datum line, draw a little arc on either side equidistance using your compass, then spread the compass out, now move your point of your compass, pinpoint onto that mark and draw an arc across up top, switch to the other side, draw an arc up across up top, and if your line is perpendicular, these two lines here that are drawn will intersect right dead on the center of the line, which they are doing. So I know that my square, and it's going to be accurate enough to use the square along the baseline to draw the vertical buttock lines. Once I've got those done, I just then took my ruler and uh, drew them full extension to the other end of the paper. So I have 52 marks at two inch intervals on my 10 foot paper. So next will be to mark out the horizontal lines or water lines and again they're on two inch marks so I have a two inch by two inch grid on this boat. So I'll make several points along several vertical lines and then I can just join the dots. So every two inches I have completely drawn out my grid lines, two inch uh, square grid lines from this baseline at the bottom here or datum zero and from the center line here or, or zero perpendicular through to the other end of the bow. So I'm going to start to label everything now and need to know is that this being zero or center line on some of the marks We'll label out each one as far as uh, distance. Now we now know that from the plans I took the first pattern at 18. So 18 would be this one here. So this would be station number one. One, hey, I'll just mark 18 inches. Station number two, a further 18 inches down. Station number two. And that's at 36 inches. I've numbered the water lines or every two inch uh, horizontal line as a water line. I've actually started zero at one up and I've got a minus one because I need to accommodate for the keel on here which was not accommodated for in the uh, original lofting of the patterns onto that first piece of paper. So we're starting at minus one and zero all the way up to 16, which gives us more than enough height to do the keel and all the way up to the very top of the stem. So the first mark is the top of the stem. That's a zero on water line 15. So zero being center line, water line 15. That's the first point in the shear line. Then move over to station number one. So a couple of things that I do know is that the shear line is two inches below the very top of the stem and on this particular piece of paper here the very top line is 15 inch line which is one below the top of the paper there. So I've laid a nail into there, I've then measured up from a baseline or down from the top where the ruler was when we took the measurements. Played around a little bit, centers a little out, these two here kind of need to be tweaked a little bit, but they're very pretty close now to the measurements that I've taken off of the bow, and I think I'm ready to just sort of draw that line. I'm going to take my pencil, I'm going to draw on the underside of the line, that's the mark that I used when driving the nails in, 
comes right up to the end here at the bow, top of the stem. So without pushing too hard to sort of moving my batten through these points, I draw my line right up to the transom and we can just go a little bit beyond. Then I will move on to the, the keel or the profile of the keel on the bottom. So I've also measured the full length of the paper from zero down there, which was the very forward point of the, of the stem. I know that the boat to the inside of the transom was exactly nine feet and three quarters of an inch. So that's what that mark is right there. The other thing we measured, we know, is that the transom rake was eight degrees. So I'm gonna use my digital caliper here to set this angle to eight degrees. And that would have been eight degrees off of vertical. So if I set one piece, one ruler to a vertical line, I know that my transom should go down on that angle there. Then I'll just use my longer ruler to extend it. We also know that the keel at the bottom, zero, was four and three quarters inches below designated water line, which on here is the two inch water line. I'll just put DWL there. So this is the very lowest point on the bottom of the transom, the keel. And then mark off some points above that datum line, which is an inch and a quarter above this zero datum line. And I'm going to run a batten towards the front. All right, I've hammered in my finishing nails and all the points. And now I'm just looking to see what it looks, what it fares out like. It seems to be to me that there's a bit of a flat spot in here. We might just take these ones out and just kind of see where this wants to bounce to. It wants to just bounce down a little bit. More of this is to the eye than to the measurement right now. So now looking at it from the end, I think we have a much clearer line now. So then I'll take my pencil and I will draw this line. And this time it's to the inside of the line. So from the table I know that at the 15 inch or zero, in, one, in this case I do have zero climbing up to 15 here, but when I took the measurements I was measuring down from the top. So those numbers are kind of just the opposite. So zero is 15 at zero inches. At four inches down it's nine sixteenths from zero. So I'm just going to mark a distance from the forward perpendicular or the zero vertical line. A distance measured from the ruler if you watch the videos when I took the uh, measurements originally. And this will give me the outer profile of the stem. Then I just tap all my finishing nails in on those marks as I've done in the other uh, lines drawn. Then I will take my batten, run it around and see how smooth the line is. I have now laid out my points for the profile of the stem, the outer portion of the stem. I've had to play with a few marks here, go back to my other drawings, make me measure, re-measure, and then using my batten here, it's not hitting a few points, but I'm going to leave it the way it is. Maybe just take this point out, just drive it in here for support. 
So and as I draw, I'm not pushing the ruler into various places that it's not really supposed to go. So I just bring this up into the profile of the keel itself and then just continue my draw right through my lines here. Now that I have my shear line marked, my keel line mark or the lower profile, the profile of the other stem, I can come back to my table of offsets, re-measure from these lines, for this example, station number one to the very baseline of zero, and we will find that I am one foot nine and three-eighths. So that's nine or sorry, one nine three eighths. On mine, I have one nine seven eighths. So let me just double check here that I haven't measured in correctly. One. Then I take the corrected numbers back to my profile view and make those adjustments on the height of the shear line on all the station forms. And then I will come back to my horizontal water lines measure distances to the profile of the outer stem and make those corrections onto my table of offsets. I've added the plotted lines for the measurements for the inner stem from the zero forward perpendicular and we know that's basically a straight line down through to the keel. Next is to add the outer rabbit line I'm starting with the keel portion first and then we'll work my way through to the uh, forward stem. So the measurements that I took were from the bottom of the keel itself up to where it met the planking. I've done that on all five stations including the transom. Laid down my batten. It takes a very nice line and so now I can just draw this line. So in continuing on with the outer rabbit line from the keel through, I've plotted all of the points which was measuring from the outside edge of the stem to where the planking met the stem. It, my, my lines are very good. I mean, there's a little off here, but it's pretty close. So I'm confident and I've just run it through and it, and it nicely lines up with the, the uh, rabbit line coming through from the keel. So I think we're all good. I can now draw this line in as the outer rabbit line. Now I'm just adding in the forefoot. So these plots were taken off of the pattern which I then transferred on to my body plan or my first raft draft of my body plan. And these curves are a little bit tight to be running a batten through in an S. We're going to do our best to join up as many points as we can and this is where the French curve starts to become your friend. So we can just kind of draw a line through here. Then it kind of curves up in the other direction through to that point up there. And then there's not really any hard and fast rule, but this just curves down towards there. And we can just add in a curve into there. There's the shape of your forefoot. That concludes episode one in lofting out the nine foot Ken Douglas. Future episodes in this series will uh, include more lines being drawn in the profile view, looking at the body plan view and other views of the boat so that we have a true and corrected version of the table of offsets for the boat for future building. And thank you very much for watching and staying part of my YouTube channel. 
do consider becoming a subscriber, hit the bell button, that's going to keep you up to date as new videos are uploaded on this series of videos and other videos produced in the Wood Orca Boat Shop.